Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good to have you with us today on First at Four. I'm Devin Skillian in for Karen Drew. One of the defendants in court today in a crime that has captured national attention. Police say two men pretending to be DTE workers tied up and murdered a 72 year old in Rochester Hill. Sean Lay was there in the courtroom. He's with us now and Sean, a lot of people wondering about a possible motive in the case. What are we learning now? Motive from court documents I pulled today, Devin, is robbery. Why these two men allegedly targeted the home of Hussein Murray? I just talked to the sheriff. That remains under investigation. They don't have that answer yet. But robbery, not knowing exactly what brought them to that front door in that chilling video. Let me take you inside court here because this truly is the first time we're getting our first look at who's known, become known as suspect number two, accused fake DTE worker Joshua Zulazo of Dearborn. He's charged with the murder of 72-year-old Hussein Murray inside his Rochester Hills home one week ago. Sheriff's investigators say Zuazo and Carlos Hernandez posed as DTE workers trying to get inside the Murray home at 10 the night before the murder. The Murrays saw them on the ring camera. They turned them away. The next day, same scam, they were let in. Mr. Murray was found dead in the home's basement. His wife, 72 years old, found bound with duct tape in the upstairs of the home. Now, we know Zuazo has an extremely long and violent criminal history. We're digging into that at 5 o'clock. We're talking violent crimes, robberies, gun crimes. Let me take you inside court now where he did not get a bond due to mass concerns about the public safety. Um, we do show that he has extensive criminal history that dates back two and a half decades, which includes a lengthy history of violence. In this matter, bond will be denied pursuant to 6.106B and F. It is obvious that these charges are very serious. Um, this court has a concern about the public safety, and this court does have concern about a flight risk. Back here live, so Zuazo not going anywhere, went right back to the Oakland County Jail. Hernandez uh, arrested 24 hours after this crime in Louisiana. He's still being held there. He waived extradition. The sheriff tells me his deputies are going down to Louisiana and will bring, back, bring him back here, Devin, sometime next week. Of course, we'll be here for his first court appearance as well. Still chilling that video at the doorbell camera. We asked the sheriff about that. He talks about that at 5 and 6. Good deal. All right, Sean, we will talk to you then. Okay. All right, other news this afternoon, an alert for people living in Garden City. Officials are finding lead in the tap water. According to the city, tests showed lead levels of 18 parts per billion. That does exceed the action level, which is 15 parts per billion. However, it is worth noting that any amount of lead is unhealthy. Garden City said in a statement, homeowners should check to see if their homes have lead service lines. If you're unsure, you would like to, your home to be inspected, you can contact the Department of Public Works. Works, and here's the phone number, 734-793-1800, 734-793-1800. We'll let you know about some construction you might have to deal with this weekend in Oakland County. DTE is going to be closing 12 Mile Road west of Telegraph for electrical work. They'll be doing electric repairs after areas were damaged in an underground fire that happened earlier this year. So 12 Mile will be closed tomorrow through Monday. So right through the weekend, once the road is open again, there will be some lane closures in place. That'll happen until December while that work on the electrical system continues. All right, all eyes again on Michigan today. Political eyes, that is, as both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump make their way through our battleground state. Uh, Donald Trump holding a roundtable in Oakland County this afternoon before holding a rally tonight at Huntington Place downtown. Vice President Harris holding campaign events in Grand Rapids, Lansing, and then over here to Oakland County before an event in Detroit tomorrow. We've got much more on all this coming up on our later editions of Local 4 News. In the meantime, head over to clickondetroit.com for everything you need to know ahead of the election, including mail-in voting dates, uh, where you need to know, if uh, should go rather, if you are interested in voting early, because yes, indeed, voting is already underway. Let's take a live look at Belleville, where there is a big fall festival going on this weekend, happening at the Bucks Family Farm. Uh, there are going to be a 15-acre corn maze, a giant slide. They've got hay rides. Festival will be going from 10 until 6. And let's check in with Ron to see if uh, folks need to bundle up if they're going to head out tomorrow. Looks like a pretty good weekend for a lot of things, Ron. And Devin, the kind of weather that we're seeing right now is going to continue. It's going to be beautiful out there. Clear skies this evening. It is going to be clear over the weekend as well with a lot of sunshine. 
but the change that we will have, it's going to get even warmer out there. Right now, we're in the mid 60s across the metro area. We have those winds that are out of the south and the south southwest, right around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, when it comes to seeing any cloud cover or any rain showers anywhere near us, that is well far away from us. Look, you got to go over toward the Rockies to encounter some showers and even some snow at the higher elevations. Here at home, we are going to be talking about this weekend's weather and of course the weather that we have for the rest of today, which is going to be beautiful, but we are getting into the 70s this weekend. We have the pleasant stretch continuing even beyond that, but there is some rain that is going to be coming our way next week. The details just moments away. Devin. All right, Ron. A homeless shelter in Pontiac is celebrating the renovation of its men's dormitory. And take a look here. Grace Centers of Hope posted this video to its Facebook page of the reveal. Thanks to anonymous donors, the shelter was able to put $75,000 into revamping the space, introducing new amenities to improve the living conditions as well. Now 116 men struggling with things like homelessness, addiction, abuse. They will have a place to stay up from the previous 79. All right, runners from around Metro Detroit and elsewhere getting ready to lace up their shoes for the Detroit Free Press Marathon coming up this Sunday. But with all the political action going on this weekend, runners are going to be picking up their bibs from a different location today. Traffic also expected to be heavier than normal because of increased security from the political visits. Priya Mann joins us now. Uh, pretty busy there today, Priya. Oh, absolutely, Devin. I mean, you have all of these runners, tens of thousands, who will be coming here to Huntington Place to pick up their bids on the same day that you have the Trump campaign event happening here at Huntington Place. So many Trump supporters here as well. Lots of excitement here at Huntington Place. At the expo, just take a look at that giant map of the route. You can see a line of folks taking their pictures here. The excitement is building with the Detroit Free Press Marathon now just two days away. Two massive events happening simultaneously at Huntington Place on Friday. Detroit Free Press Marathon runners were picking up their bids and Trump supporters were getting ready for a campaign rally tonight. This man didn't realize he was in the wrong line. Michigan is, of course, a battleground state this election season, and marathon organizers were busy making last-minute changes. We had to do a couple of pivots over the last 48 hours. What we ended up with, which was moving halls from Hall B to A, uh, you know, to put some space between the security perimeter for the campaign event and us. Inside the expo, runners from all over the world have descended on the Motor City. We do one half a marathon a year. I told them we will do this one. This couple traveled all the way from Holland to run the Free Press Marathon on Sunday. What was it about the race that you guys wanted to do this half this year? Because it's go to from the U.S. to Canada and then back to the U.S. It's so, a true international run. Yes, really. And it just so happens this will be my first half marathon. And Devin, look what I just got. I picked up my bib and, of course, official Free Press Marathon merch. Much more merchandise to be bought back there. I definitely spent a bit of time shopping. The excitement here is palpable. For somebody who's running for the very first time, I'm really nervous. I'm really excited. I hope it goes well. I've been training for several months. But the best part is when you're out here and you're talking to those seasoned pros, I mean, they give you all the encouragement. They tell you what it's like, what to watch out for. I really can't wait to lace up early Sunday morning. Morning. I'm used to waking up early. That's right. This time, you know, I'll just be running 13.1. <laughs> we are so proud of you, Priya. This is really exciting the way that, and we know you've really dug in to prepare for this. So have a great run, and we look forward to hearing all about it. Thanks, Devin. You know you'll hear it. You know it. All right, Priya. Uh, she and so many others. Best of luck coming up on Sunday morning.